Welcome back, everyone. Well, I must confess, we all have favorites. Although, uh, Joe, I was, never the, <laughs> I was never the favorite in my family. I, I, I understand where you're coming from, believe me, Jesse. <laughs> I say that because my guest is Dr. Joseph Dragoni. That's the last time I'm going to call you a doctor, by the way. He's a superintendent of the Boston Spa School District and a frequent guest here on Look Today. Welcome back, Joe. Thank you, Jesse. Always great to be here. Appreciate it's it. Real nice to have you here. Uh, we got a lot to cover, but uh, we did a report recently that Boston Spa uh, was uh, achieved an award. Newsweek, the national organization Newsweek, is one of the top high schools in the country. Uh, considering the fact that there's probably a pool of about 15,000 high schools to be in the top echelon is really something. So Joe, uh, tell me about this. What's the criteria for achieving this? Sure, great, Jesse. And again, thanks for having me. Always great to talk about this. That's and great. we're really excited about it. And, and the credit goes to the staff and the leadership team at the mm -hmm. high school doing the work every day. You know, I get to sit here and talk to you and brag about it, frankly, mm -hmm. but the folks that do the work get all the credit. Oh, you know, so, so we right so right. so excited, so thrilled to have to have the caliber of the folks that we do working with kids every day. And families in the district need to know that. Yes. Um, and that's that's something that you know, as the leader of the organization, I hold incredibly incredibly high. So mm -hmm. uh, right up front, we can't do anything without the folks that do the hard work. So match sure. all the credit goes to them, and mm -hmm. we appreciate that. So Newsweek ultimately looks at the high schools, public high schools across the country, and they start by looking at math and English achievement in the high school, and they mm -hmm. draw a line at the 70th percentile, basically saying, are you performing better than 70% of, wow. your, of your colleagues in the state? Mm -hmm. And then from there, they go on and they look a little further. They look at SAT scores, ATC, ACT scores, you know, how much advanced placement you're offering, international baccalaureate program, um, about your counselor support, you know, what kind of, how many counselors you have per pupil to help, you know, move kids in that, you know, really get them ready for post-secondary work. Mm -hmm. And then they rank the top 500. We're very fortunate this year to have been considered in that. Mm -hmm. um, certainly flattering. You know, the country loves ranking things and making yeah, lists. So there's lists and rankings for everything. And, uh -huh. and frankly, um, we keep all of that in perspective. But it's nice to be recognized for the hard work, regardless how you want to look at it. Well, you know, uh, you might know something. Um, I, this is not the first time you've gotten this award. I think it was 2013. Yes, we've oh, received got... it previously, and we received um, just this year, which we talked about as well, the Washington Post recognition last spring. Yes. So um, one of America's most challenging high schools. So we're still, you know, very excited about that as well. Joe, this is phenomenal stuff. And you know what? I know that they do the rankings, and if you hit that 70 percentile, then they dig deeper into the uh, ACTs, the advanced placement, into the SATs, right? But the, the part that uh, triggers me is the ratio of counselors to students. Let's face it, at that time in a, in a, in a child's development, they need those counselors. Not only to say, okay, you could go to one of these five schools here, but to really understand what their needs are. And I know that that's part of this. And that is a real tribute, as you were saying, to the teachers in the trenches every day and the counselors in the trenches every day and their relationships with the students. And uh, you know what? We've seen it firsthand. Um, I'm proud to announce that with the support of SEFQ, shout out to Nicole Stein, uh, to uh, underwrite, once again, third year in a row yep, to do year. Tech Talks. Yes. Uh, Tech Talks is the program we do in conjunction with Boston Spa School System where we give the kids cameras, a bunch of GoPro cameras, and actually document what it's like at their experience level to be able to ch uh, accept and work through the challenges of something like TechSmart. Right, right, right. right. So, you know, you've got that going. Um, Joe, I want to also talk about something uh, Phil Morris over at Proctor. Yes, yes. Uh, you've got this very interesting artisan residency program this year, which actually is another perfect example of why this school uh, hits the top echelon. Tell us about this. Sure, and we're real excited to be launching this. And, and Proctor's, we've been working with at the elementary level for a couple of years now mm -hmm. um, in one of our elementary schools, putting on productions and having their artists come and help with that. And, and Philip is second to none. He's a great supporter of the oh, arts and schools and, and a great colleague. Yeah. So this year we're launching a media works class for ninth grade English where kids will be taking their ninth grade English and it's going to be co-taught with an artist in residence from Proctor's and, wow. and the film industry. Wow. So we will have somebody who is a pro in filmmaking really translating um, this medium, per, you know, as we want to look at it with how how literature, English, and the, and the curriculum in New York State can really be expressed through this different lens. And it's super exciting. 
Um, it's really, it's really going to be about uh, uh, touching kids to learn mm -hmm. in a different way. And we're, we're just really, it, it, we're excited about it. This is not stuff you see every day, and I think that's a lot. We take a lot of pride in that as mm -hmm. well. And, it, and we've two teachers have been working closely developing curriculum this summer. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, you got to have a staff that wants to take risks and try mm -hmm. new things too. And frankly, and launch a program with an artist. Yeah, you know, no so it's it, it's really gonna be it's really gonna be great. You know, uh, a couple of thoughts on that. I mean, you know, these these kids are at a very formative time where you know they they want to express themselves and they want to learn. And this isn't just bringing a guest speaker for a day. Right. You know, let's face it. If you take on the challenge of working in a partnership with somebody like Proctor's to bring an artist in residence into the school, there's curriculum. There's all kinds of demands. There's uh, things that you need to do to make certain over the course of a year. This is a year course. For these kids, right? Ninth graders, ninth graders, freshman oh, year. That's fantastic. Freshman year. Uh, one other thing we got time for. You also have something going on with SPAC in the dance realm. Yes, yes. Tell yes. me about that. Starting looks like January first. Well, um, well, when we get back from holiday break, mm -hmm. we're going to launch a partnership with SPAC to bring dance to our fifth graders at one of our Multi Avenue Elementary School. Mm -hmm. Is a pilot this year, so they've got artists coming up from New York City going to explore dance for six weeks in their uh, PE classes mm -hmm. um, with those teachers. We're going to have high school kids come down as well as part of their PE program, help mentor the kids and learn about mm -hmm. the experience. We'll be doing everything from international dance to hip hop and then it'll culminate at the end of the unit with public performance and performance mm -hmm. for the kids in the school. So again, a, a little different way to be able to look at how we can provide program. And you know, we have, we have you know, Proctor, SPAC, I mean, Look at look at the resources we have in our own right backyard, up, right and up. we're fortunate to have the leadership um, of these organizations that want to collaborate with with K twelve mm -hmm. to expose kids to these opportunities. How many how many kids would have the opportunity to experience international dance I know. Um, if they didn't have a chance to go through this program? So very exciting, and obviously, like I said, our, our partners are second to none. Mm -hmm. So uh, which is it's a privilege. To be working with them, you know, I can get I can get away with saying this. Joe is the first one to give everyone else a credit. I got news for you. Joe deserves a lot of credit himself. We work with a lot of people, and from the day that we started working with you and your team, uh, we just came back excited, 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 and more excited. That's how Tech Talk started. That's how these programs start. And one other thing, you know, I spent a lot of years in New York, Joe. And you want to know why the kids get great math and English scores? It's because it's a well-rounded education. Exposure to the arts and your ability to learn triggers certain things in your mind that actually enhances your math and your English skills. We found out about that firsthand in a number of things that we did. So Joe, great to have you in again. Jesse, I, thank I, you. A I pleasure. can't wait to get started with Tech Talks. A, a pleasure. And you're always welcome to come back and give us good news about Boston Spa. Great, thank you. Great to see you. Same here. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.